Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name is Connor. And I'm Rebecca. And it's the new year. So, uh, you know, hope everyone had good holidays. Yep, happy 2022. Yep. It's a lot of tools. Um, Yeah, so uh, this year is going to be suffering. But, um, mm. hey, uh, just very briefly, there are preview pages up for the new Iron Fist comic. So, if you want to check it out, you can. Um, but today, we are here uh, because I couldn't make the regular group recording, so uh, Heroes of High has been put off again, but we're back to do some more Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, which is probably yeah. better. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Now, just before... It's issue 18, but before we get into that in my little Iron Fist trade... Um, there is Deadly Hands of Kung Fu 15, like it includes the cover for it, because Iron Fist is on it, mm-hmm. and basically the reason he's on that cover is because there's a reprint of uh, Marvel Premiere 16 in there, Yeah. and then the next time he appears is Deadly Hands of Kung Fu 17, and it's basically an ad for next issue of Kung Fu Spectacular Sons of the Tiger in a special team-up adventure with Iron Fist's living weapon. Um, plus the concluding chapter of the Golden Dragon Saga starring Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, and an in-depth interview with Chuck Norris, martial arts superstar. Uh, Amazing. <laughs> there's no interview with Chuck Norris that I could see, so maybe got pushed back or something. Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't see it either. I saw some, um, lots of how to do Kung Fu, some sort of section. Yeah, I, I saw that. I didn't really bother going through it, but, uh... I just flicked through it. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu 18 is what we're here to do, but we're only doing the Iron Fist uh, portion, which is cool because it's actually a team-up with Sons of the Tiger. Yeah. And some other dude, uh, Blackbird, who I think was awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the cover, uh, no Iron Fist on the cover, it's just Strong chi fighting uh, Ninja, martial arts against Ninja Magic, the searing climax of the Golden Dragon Saga, and there's a Golden Dragon in the background. Uh, cool cover. Yeah, they've all got really nice covers, and it's another one. Yeah. Um, so I might, I might use my digital copy, because it's just less It's unruly. easier. Um, yeah, I'm just going to flick... Oh, let's do the credits first, and then I can flick away from that. Yes, uh, I will get the credits. So, while well, I'll do it. Iron Fist, Fist of Darkness, Fist of Death, guest starring Sons of the Dragon, uh, by Bill Mantlo, Pat Broderick, and Terry Austin. Uh, yeah, Terry Austin did the inks. Um, right. uh, so Bill Matlow uh, was the writer. From he, he did a fair few things. So he did lots of Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Uh, unfortunately, I found out he was in an accident in 1992. Oh no! And he's like, just needs 24 hour assistance, and that oh, really that's sucks. Sad. So yeah. if, if you want to look into that, I think you can donate and stuff if you want. So um, yeah, uh, but to the issue. So now well, let me just get to the. Yeah, no, you could like scroll through lots of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, because obviously in the trade it just just has the Iron Fist stuff, but since I'm using yeah. a digital copy, it has everything in it. Um, yeah, so prologue. Um, you know, we get yeah, it has a prologue which is funky. Yeah, we we get the classic sort of narration, dramatic narration, you know, which is pretty yeah. great. Uh, again, before I get into it, I, I recommend everyone reads this stuff. Uh, if you're yeah, an Iron Fist it's fan, fun. it's all quality. Like, if you spent money on Heart of the Dragon, like, you should spend money on this, because it's, like, the opposite end. It's so much better. <laughs> um, so, uh, there will be spoilers, obviously. But, yeah. yeah. Um, so we start off, and there's, like, you know, this cool moody narration, and then we have these two, you know, it's kind of like Bonnie and Clyde sort of thing. Yeah. Um... Not very subtle. They got kicked Not out of L.A. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, we can we can rob here. And then he just, like, shoots the dude behind the train ticket booth and 
steals. Yeah, yeah. just to get their counter to go in the metro. But hey, why not? Yeah, it's like hey. But man, they're also the extolling the fact that New York has a subway and LA doesn't. Yeah. And the cops can't fire because you know there's just people everywhere. Mm. So they're running through the crowd and they inadvertently push a lady onto the train tracks. Yeah. Um, whose clothes change between yeah. changes. <laughs> they do. Uh, but we have... <laughs> it's pretty funny because not only is Iron Fist catching the train, so are all three Sons of the Tiger. Yeah. And uh, Nathaniel Alexander Bird, Black Bird, who's like a yeah. PI or something. Um, yeah. So. And they're all catching it exactly at that place where she gets knocked onto the tracks. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Maybe it's like peak hour or something. Um, mm mm-hmm. So, uh, for those who are Sons of the Tiger, we have Abe, Abe Brown, Linson, and Bob Diamond. Yeah, I should all know Bob Diamond. Yeah, which is very, uh, Enter the Dragon. You have, uh, the Chinese guy, the black guy, and the white guy. Um, yeah. And they're cool, they're cool. They haven't, they haven't gotten to their Beatles stage yet, so that's, that's good, because I hate, <laughs> like, love, uh, cube, no, squares. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. uh, yeah, so Abe goes to get the girl. Yep. While Lynn and Bob go to catch the crooks. Yep. And um, Danny goes to assist. Yes. The with with Bob uh, and Abe, he goes to assist Abe. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, actually, well, first, uh, we have <laughs> what I love about this guy. Apparently, he he showed up in Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. That's like his first appearance. He's like oh, cool. running around with a gun, which is great. Um, yeah, <laughs> and he he cracks me up. There's, there's a line he says later, which I found really funny. Mm. Um, but yeah, so he's in a shootout. Now that I guess they're not around crowd. He's in a shootout with these guys, and yep. um, Abe goes down to uh, help the chick, or the lady, whatever. Sorry, um, mm. uh, they're a bit too slow. Train's about yep. to go into them. And, uh, well, this kind of surprised me. Danny jumps down and he stops the train with the Iron Fist. Yeah, he must be, like, really moderating it. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't... Because I'm like, surely that would cause more injuries. But... Yeah. I think it's kind of like the Superman effect. He stops the train, but it somehow doesn't, you know, send everyone in the carriage flying. Um, but, uh... Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, considering this era of Danny Rand, it's a pretty impressive feat of strength. Yeah. Um, he usually, like, just uses it, in this book anyway, to, like, break weapons and stuff, or walls, so... So maybe that's why, because within this setting, it's not enough to do more than just stop the train. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so really cool moment. I liked it. Scram sound effects. Um, yeah. And I love it. The train has stopped. It's over. And yet somehow, you know that it will never be truly over. Yeah, he's looking at his fist, yeah. going, ow. Until 2022, anyway. But, um, yeah, so, uh, Abe Brown's like, you know, hey man, thanks, and, you know, everything's all good. Uh, looks like Blackbird's killed the other guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the, the other girl is unconscious. We don't really see what happens to her. Um, they no, just kind but of I'm guessing, it. yeah, they didn't want to, they wouldn't have, couldn't have him kill her, so. Yeah. And then the cops, like, start trying to put her on Danny. They're like, hey, man, you know, you have to explain everything, and you, you know, there's a lot of damage to that train. Someone's going to have to pay for it, which Danny probably can pay for it. Yeah, um, but, you know. Danny's not, he's not, you know, from Earth yet. <laughs> mm. um, so Blackbird comes in, he's like, hey, guys, you know, let's, let's all go have a drink. He takes them to the bar, and uh, but we get a little interlude where uh, there's this guy, Snake Eyes. Yeah, because his eyes look like a snake's eyes. Yeah. Very obvious uh, and it never really... discussion there. Yeah, there, there, there's, there's... There's a bit of a dodgy logo for his organisation. Like the, the sort of... The other fist. fist. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's a really, really common karate logo. Oh, okay. Um, I was thinking of it as, like, Black Power, but, like... There could be that, too. Uh, so, I don't know which one it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's... The, 
it, it's uh, we, we've talked about before how these were more like martial arts comics, yeah. But this yeah. is kind of like a evil superhero or James Bond evil organization, you know, because they got like goon yeah, outfits. yeah. Um, There's a lot, yeah. They have proper goon outfits. But uh, this guy, I want to, I want to see if um. Like, he's been in anything else. Uh, no, it's just this. So, there's there's stuff going on with this guy, but we never really get a huge background. Yeah, we don't get like. a huge background, except that he's out of jail, but we'll find out later, maybe. A lot of these early Iron Fist and Deadly Hands, there's a lot of, like, mysterious antagonists that appear and then die and never hear them <laughs> So, some guy, anyway, some guy... You know, he goes to apologize to his boss, Snake Eyes, but Snake Eyes is like, no, kills him. And they dump the body somewhere just, you know, to show, hey, this guy's yeah. a bad cookie. Um, and yeah, you got your your Black Power or your Karate logo. Which yeah, whichever the logo is. Um, <laughs> I, guess, I guess for you nerds out there, Karate logos tend to be a clenched fist facing forward like a punch, but some of them are palm up. Right. Um, yeah. To show. More sure unity, or whatever. I don't know, but um, who knows? It's not like we can ask the writer. So, um, yeah. Uh, but he just to show he's bad, or more bad than we thought. He plans to. So there's been an epidemic. Wow. Um, <laughs> topical, I know. much. Um, topical. And because he's got these blueprints for Harlem Hospital. And there's there's this epidemic that's like killing people in a matter of hours, and this seems like a pretty big deal. I like mean, this, you it would be a big deal, you know. This seems like something Reed Richards would get involved with. Um, yeah. But uh, more topical, he wants to get an isotope. Um, <laughs> yeah, he wants to get what the thing that can cure it, so he can blackmail them. Yeah. And uh, then we we find out later it's not exactly the case, but. We'll get to that. Um, and then we get transition scene. A refreshment spot on 125th Street and Lennox Avenue, Harlem. Uh, rare instance of Danny bumming around in Harlem with no Luke Cage appearance. Yeah, and yeah. They, they haven't even met yet. And Luke Cage isn't in this at all. Like, if you if you do Marvel now, like, uh, if, if Harlem's in it, Luke Cage is in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, like, very certain Luke Cage is around for this point so uh, and what's what's this background dialogue so, so I ups and tells my old lady that she better he's like last time you up and told her something she shot you in the leg she's like what are these guys talking yeah, about yeah there's some really <laughs> I got really confused with some of the storyline I think that's just setting the tone for what kind yeah, of I people hang out there I think it is as well like, like yeah um, also rare instance of getting beer yeah, well, it may be one of the rare instances, as we'll find out in the last panel. Yeah. Um, so, but, but Danny is being given a beer. Yeah, and I, I thought that was cool, like, because, you know, we just don't really see it. Like, he's just hanging around with some dudes and having a drink. Um, and what I like, and they make a point of this a couple of times, is the Sons of the Tiger and uh, the, the detective, they don't pry like they no, saw No, they don't even they don't ask anything about how he stopped the train. Yeah. Yeah, they just like assume it that, and and that's kind of unusual for Danny, but you can say everyone he quite likes it. Always ask. But yeah, they just respect Yeah, cuz you would. They respect would his ask. privacy. Um Oh yeah, totally. And I think that just goes to show these guys that you know. Yeah. Um, Good guys. Yeah. And uh, the the bartender starts freaking out when he sees Blackbird and his awesome hat. So mm-hmm. he runs away, and then Blackbird's like, "Hey, I have to use the bathroom." And Danny's like, "All good," but you know they all know that he's not using the bathroom and he's following this guy. Yeah. And he gets startled by a rat, <laughs> which is hilarious. Yeah. So, uh, you get sold by a rat, and this turns out to be the base of these guys. Yeah, it's led to by the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so these guys know each other, because uh, the Blackbird is the guy who got... who sent um, uh, Snake Eyes to prison in the first place for the murder rap. 
Mm-hmm. And he got five years for it, which is seems low. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it does a bit, but, you know, maybe there were mitigating circumstances. That's true. But he killed a blind war veteran who was begging to leave <laughs> him alone. <laughs> so it's like pretty messed up. Um, and... You know, he's like, yep, I'm going to kill you. And I love how the detective's like, so shoot, if I'm dead, I'm not going to have to listen to you talk anymore. <laughs> which is which is the one that I really liked. Cause yeah. It was just funny the way they wrote it. It's very yeah. funny. Yeah. And then our gang shows up. We get the Sons of the Tiger in the forefront. All, all in their costumes. Yeah. And Danny's just in the back. <laughs> he's got his hands on his belt in, like, this weird he power does. sense. Um, yeah. He's like, he looks like the, the Iron Fist kid again. Back yeah. to his cowboy yeah. power stance. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> throughout this whole comic, there's there's heaps of this narration and stuff, and the dialogue's pretty good. I'm just not reading it all yeah. out. And uh, the artwork's good, too. It's, it's, yeah. A, yeah, it's nice. It's different to the past couple of issues, but I still like yeah. it. Um, there's a lot of... I've noticed in this comic, there's a lot of panels per page a lot of the time. Yeah. It does feel fairly crowded. Yeah. But they're having to do a lot in not that much time. Yeah, this is about 17 pages, which I think is the shortest story we've had so far. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, everyone starts fighting. And they're all shooting their guns, because martial arts are essentially superpowers in this comic. They're all dodging bullets and stuff. Um, Well, that being said, they are augmented by the amulets. So I'll give it a pass. Um... But yeah, so Danny dies behind some boxes and he comes back out as Iron Fist. Because he's like, these guys are outnumbered, I need to bring out the big guns. And, you know, everyone's kicking the crap out of each other. It's pretty good. Yeah, no, it's a good fight. Yeah. And, you know, we get a bad guy speech. It's like, you know, one hour, I'll steal this thing and the city will be on its heels in one hour. And Danny's like, no, you know, you can't do that. And everyone's like, yeah, we really got to kick this guy's butt now. <laughs> so Danny's, uh, he gives a hell of a knee to this guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, he really does. He's about to get shot in the back, but luckily, uh, Blackbird. Uh, Has him covered. Yeah, he doesn't shoot the gun out of his thing, he just shoots him. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, these dudes have been watching too many episodes of Gunsmoke. They think they can solve everything with guns. It's like, have you guys been watching too many episodes of Kung Fu? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Probably, to yeah. be fair. Uh, Oof, but then we get... Then we get a racial slur. Yeah, we get some racism to show these guys are yep, bad. To show uh, we're in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, he's racist to Lin Sun, and then Lin Sun's like, hey man... You know, you, you want to kill thousands of people. That's not very nice. And, and then he also says most <laughs> of them are white. Yeah. So oh, no, maybe it uh, is a... Guy going, oh, they're white. I don't mind watching them kick off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so don't a bit more racism some of those there. fat honkies kick off. Yeah, so these guys are racist wow. in addition to being um, mass murderers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that he's like, then you are no better than scum and I will treat you as such. It's like, yeah, pretty much. He gives yeah, like a nice much. little hammer fist to his collarbone um and you know Linson starts getting shot at then Abe Brown comes in there's a lot of cool stuff of them yeah they're all working as a team backing each other up yeah yeah which is nice because you don't really see that much in like no not as much not in current sort of thing yeah yeah the martial arts stuff anyway that being said you don't see yeah. martial arts either so but um yeah so daddy starts to fight snake eyes himself yeah. And then Danny's like, wait a minute, and he starts getting beat beat on by Snake Eyes. He gets a he underestimates him, he gets a huge punch. Bin. And then a bin. On him. Yep. And then he starts choking him, but uh Blackbird comes in to help, gets punched. Mm. Uh he shoots him, but it does nothing because the reveal uh there's gleaming metal <laughs> glass containing his organs. Um, it's really gross as a concept. Yeah, and they can see them and everything. Yeah, there's a transparent window on his chest. It would be like the Modoc one, except instead of a little person, it's just his guts. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, um, everyone's like, you... So it's like, let's all hit him at once. And he's just shrugging everyone off. You know, no one's really a match for him because he's like some... He calls it the power. Uh, which yeah. I, I like how it's ambiguous. I don't really bother with, like, the science. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, you know, I'm no super need. strong. We don't, um, we don't have time to set up this character. He's powerful because he's got this thing yeah. that happened to him in prison. And then we get Danny and his ice cream collar. Glowing fist. Uh, and glowing fist, yes. What does it take to turn a man into a monster? You see no vestige of humanity remaining in the man called Snake Eyes, only an overwhelming obscenity that is given up his own hold on life, and now he wishes to rob others of their existence. The flame of the dragon burns through your arm, and as you center to yourself, it blazes about your hand. Uh, then the fighting continues, everyone's getting, you know, beat up. And then Danny, uh, the fire, the dragon fire glows, smoldering, burning, and you strike. Yeah! Buffoon. Right into the chest. Yeah, and the glass upon the man's chest shatters, spilling the fluid and all, all contained. <laughs> Upon the filth the of the alley's floor. Yeah, so his insides have just spilled out onto the ground. Luckily, that's not depicted too graphically. No. Uh, you just see sort of liquid pouring out. Yeah. But like, they make sure no... we know. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> make sure we, don't we know. see it, yeah. And then Snake Eyes falls down flat, and Danny has killed a man. Yeah, wow. no, Danny just wastes someone. Um, <laughs> and he's not he's not too happy about it. Uh, we could, we, and it turns out... Uh, he just needed the isotope five. That would uh, it was the only thing that would keep him alive, said the doctor. Yeah. So that was, I think, the real motivation behind it. Yeah. Um, he's like, I don't need nothing no more. Nothing. Bop falls over. Danny's pretty sad. Yeah, which is fair. I don't think he's killed someone at this no. point, unless you count the dragon. <laughs> yeah, but even then, the dragon lives on in him. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this is kind of a flat-out kill someone. Yeah. Like, right in front of your face as well. And so they go back to the bar, and Blackbird's friend is like, oh, there's a little fracas in here. The bar is completely trashed. There's bodies everywhere. Um, <laughs> she's like, okay. <laughs> so uh, Daddy's like, you killed a man who would have killed others, yet it does not bring balance. Blood spilled like beer on a bar room floor. There is no balance. And as if they hear your thoughts. No, Danny, it never adds up, but it still had to be done. Drink up, friend, and forget about it. And so they know it's him. And yeah, Dan- yeah. And then Danny moves fast, and he's like, ah, oh, thanks. And again, they, what I like, they don't make a big deal. They don't push a minute yet. Yeah. yeah. Respect and then privacy. the final comment is, you discover you like the taste of beer. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, obviously, is Danny's first beers. Yeah. Or at least this brand of beer. Maybe he didn't like the other ones he tried. And it ends with them all drinking together and with shots of, like, the bartender cowering and some two just collapsed over the bar. So, um, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed it, but I found the story more confusing than the last one we read. Yeah, I mean, it was it was messy. There was a lot of, like, close contact fighting. Like, you said, a lot of panels, very small, getting a lot of information across. But I did overall enjoy it. I thought the art was, was very strong. Yeah. I liked the... Uh, Sons of the Dragon, um, and you have to have, like, you have no time to set up a proper villain no. stuff, so it was very quick. I didn't really get Blackbird, I didn't really understand him for a lot of it, <laughs> uh, so I think that was my confusion, and, um, but I, you know, it's, it's an enjoyable story, it's definitely one yeah. I'd, I'd recommend people, like, they, they've all, the ones with these we've read, I've enjoyed a lot, just because they, they go, they just really do pull you back into the 70s kind of comics, yeah. and, it's literally just quick setup, fight, quick resolution. And it, it goes back to the character's roots as well. Yeah, Paris yeah, and also, like, goes back to the character's roots. You get to see the Sons of the Dragon, who, like, obviously we've seen a lot of Bob Diamond, we've seen a little bit of the others, personally. Yeah. But then you get to see them as a team, which is kind of nice. And they're they're bought for, like, Marvel martial yeah. arts history as yeah. well. Uh, they predated Danny. Um, they... You know, a lot of it's like White Tiger now, but honestly, I prefer Sons of the Tiger to White Tiger because, as you said, it's a team. Yeah. And there's been various White Tigers, I'm just talking about them broadly. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and also notable, I guess, this is the first team up between the yeah, Sons of the Tiger and really Daddy. Cool. Or the first meet. And well, they are just so welcoming and, and it's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that brings, because what I really liked about this is, you're right, like a 
some of it was a little bit all over the place because I had to tell this story yeah. in so little time, but I really loved all the characters. That's what... Yeah, like I think I would have just been happy if they'd just gone to the bar and yeah. like spent time chatting. <laughs> but like comics at the time weren't like that, and comics at the time still aren't really like that. And you need something, but like we've only got this. It's not even like a full issue length. It's what you said, eighteen pages, yeah, or something. Yeah, so it's short. Um, and I think it's you know, it's, it's it stands up with against many of the Powerman Nine Fist issues. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of story, even. And it is so... Yeah. It's cool in this comic how they're, they're bypassing tropes that infect the genre. Yeah. You know? Again, we've used this example many times, but them just respecting his privacy and not no exposition yeah. or explanation and from like nobody either else. side. You don't even have background chat going, did you see that guy's fist or any of that? Yeah. Or well, no, it's like, I wonder who these three guys are. You know? It's just they're just working together. Um, uh, so, yeah, really, really cool stuff. I really enjoyed it. Um, which is saying a lot because I, I I find you know Iron Fist for me right now is hard to enjoy, but this stuff you know I really like this stuff. So yeah, that was um, good. I was glad we got a chance to read it. Then next issue, beginning a super spectacular, senses shattering six part epic featuring Iron Fist, Living Weapon, Martial Arts Mayhem, as you've never seen, an intrigue as you've never seen before by Chris Claremont and Rudy Nebrez. Nice. Also, the new pulse-pounding chapter of Sons of the Tiger, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, 19 on sale November 4 for $1. Um, okay. And the cover is like... The preview cover is Danny in a fighting pose with like a bunch of mirrors with a bad guy in them. You know, very Enter the Dragon. And there's a uh, eastern-looking woman. woman. <laughs> yeah, on, on the ground. There's... Who knows what's happening, but uh, Who knows? I can't she wait. Be a mer- she looks like a mermaid, actually. Oh, no, she's got a leg. So she's got one of those weird split skirts. I Yeah, when you said that, I looked at her. I'm like, hey, is she a mermaid? <laughs> no, but well, then you see the leg poking out. Sorry, that's me being and the cover immensely for the, dense. The cover for the next one is awesome. Um, I think it's... Uh, it looks a lot like the famous John Byrne cover where he's punching forward. Having a quick look. Oh yeah, it's awesome. And uh, this is actually the cover for the trade, the Iron Fist of the Ends Kung Fu trade. So. Oh, nice. You know, if I ever win really the lottery, nice that's what you're buying. Well, if I ever win the lottery, I might, you know, these might be omnibuses I might pick up because mm-hmm. I mean I don't really care about Shang Chi, but I do. I do really like the Sons of the Tiger from what I've seen so far. Yeah, yeah. So, so I could see myself being interested in reading this. Uh, the so. Shang Chi story, I, I flicked through it. It looked all right. The art's still really nice, so I could see myself, like, getting yeah. to enjoy it. I mean, I, I would read it if I got it. Yeah, sure. yeah. Like, um, you know, but, uh, yes, good issue. Um, you know, read it, pick up this trade. Uh, same same as last time, you can get this in the first Omnibus of Deadly Hands and Kung Fu. You can get this in the Iron Fist Deadly Hands Kung Fu trade, where you can pick up individually. Um, but, um... Yeah, so next time, hopefully we're going to be doing Heroes for Hire 6 and 7. Yes, sorry for the delay on that. We're just trying to get us all in. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but it'll be cool. Um, if not, probably more Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Yeah, we'll it'll, keep going. It'll be interesting now that we have a multi-part uh, story. Yeah, I know. A six-part story, that's huge. Yeah, and I'm looking and it goes, yeah, from 19 to 24. Nice. And each issue seems to be about 20 pages or less. So, you know, uh, actual chunky content. It's not just like five nice. pages per issue. So That's awesome. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I guess I guess some plugs. Our patrons. I want to thank our patrons, Derek, Russell, and Ray. Thank yep, you guys thank so you very much. much. Um, it basically allows us to keep the podcast going or it'd be too expensive and um yeah so thanks heaps guys and also uh check out my other podcast on last sons of krypton with ray uh there's fun stuff for that coming up this year and rebecca do you have anything you want to uh into the night moonlight podcast so the show is coming so get on board we do there's a lot of podcasts each week i'm not on most of them but yeah. i uh, i do the new issue ones and i'll probably do the new episode ones so yeah but yeah 
And um, shout out to DCAU. Okay. Yes. So, uh, DC, and I thought I did them last time, but DC Animated Universe as well, DCAU. Uh, we are working our way, way through all the animated DC movies. So yeah. uh, we are in some superhero girls hell at the moment. <laughs> but um, it's a lot of fun. I'm still waiting for that killing joke to upload. Can't oh, yeah, that. that should be soon. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, until next time. Uh, get some groovy martial arts friends, you know? And try a few beers. Yeah, and then take to the streets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, peace. Take care, bye-bye. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. Any musical images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. We do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sons of the dragon podcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, anything you want, really. It doesn't even have to be related to Iron Fist. If you don't want it read on the air, though, make sure you mention that. You can also find us on Facebook, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash sons of the dragon, uh, hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl. Just search Iron Fist Podcast and you'll find us real quick. We are also on iTunes. If you find us there, give us a review and rate us. If it's less than five stars, please say why so we can improve the show. And we're on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And last but not least, head over to our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, WordPress.com. That's where I put all the show notes. I'd like to thank Thomas Tissot for composing the Iron Fist theme song we use at the start of our Iron Fist episodes on the podcast. I'd also like to thank Peter John Sikorsky for composing the Power Man and Iron Fist theme we use at the start of our Power Man and Iron Fist episodes. And finally, thanks to you guys for listening.